and so it's certainly uh, disappointing to be in a in a position uh, where uh, we need uh, Lynette back to discuss the healthcare system capacity. Uh, Mao Tobin's and I know uh, that we can rely on Lynette to give us uh, vital updates and speak on the, the state of our healthcare system moving forward. So welcome back, Lynette. Uh, today we are uh, announcing an additional death uh, related uh, to COVID-19. This is a female in her 80s uh, related to uh, the Parkview uh, place out outbreak. So I want to extend my condolences to the family and loved ones of, of all the families of the uh, seven individuals whose deaths were announced since uh, last Thursday. Our current five-day test positivity rate is 7.1% with 100 new cases of virus being identified as of 9.30 this a.m. Bringing our total number of lab confirmed cases in Manitoba to 4,349. Uh, based on the increasing case levels in northern Manitoba, new COVID-19 public health orders uh, have taken effect as of 12 a.m. this morning. And so we look at from last Sunday the 18th to Saturday the 24th, we announced 14 deaths, 14 Manitobans. We also announced 831 cases, 831 cases in a single week. On this trajectory, we expect to have more than 5,000 cases by the end of this week. Many of these cases are linked to social gatherings. Uh, we're seeing people who are socializing with many different contacts and many different large groups. Uh, we've seen many of these cases linked to Thanksgiving. Uh, case investigations are showing multiple people from one gathering. Uh, we've seen funerals with many people attending leading to large number of close contacts and cases. We know this is a hard time uh, for, for people. Uh, not being able to grieve in the way we normally do is very challenging. Uh, but these restrictions are in place because we know how this virus is transmitted. Gathering large people indoors for prolonged periods of time puts us at risk of transmission and we see that risk now. Uh, we see many cases linked to this type of gathering. And so we've obviously been trying to discourage large gatherings uh, indoors. Uh, at events such as funerals, even though we know how difficult that can be. We've had people attend medical procedures without disclosing that they have been in contact with a close case. This has left dozens of healthcare providers uh, off work needing to self-isolate. We have an entire surgical team at home for two weeks uh, because of this non-disclosure. So this puts significant strain on our healthcare system. We have an individual who was very likely acquired the, uh, acquired their COVID at a faith-based organization, a large gathering, uh, and later was a visitor at a personal care home, which led to uh, the beginnings of an outbreak at that center. So we see as we increase the number of people we're in contact with, we increase our risk and that risk can be transferred to people in very vulnerable settings. We've had people go to work and social gatherings while they're experiencing symptoms. And this is one of the things we've been saying from the beginning that we have to change if we're wanting to be successful. We've had an individual attend work for an entire week while symptomatic before being tested. We've had individuals who had had symptoms for a week got tested but did not self-isolate. They went to a large social gathering. They had a gathering at their own house. Uh, many contacts, including cases. We've had many people who uh, went home or stayed home uh, because they were ill, only to feel a little bit better the next day and then go back to school or work, uh, only for those symptoms to return. Uh, and then later exposing many, uh, many people uh, to the virus. 
We've had uh, a specific example is an individual who left work because they were ill, uh, but then went shopping and exposed many people at, uh, uh, at many different uh, events. Uh, a known positive case had a gathering at their home, exposing many people. So we need to decrease our contacts outside of their household. Uh, we need to change how we're doing things right now. Um, you know, we, everyone can think about this as if, if public health contacted you, would you be able to tell them who all your contacts were in the last week or even over the weekend? If that would be difficult for you, it probably means you've had way too many contacts over that period of time. And that's the challenge that public health is. We, we, we can't get to everyone's contacts because people can't remember all the people they've been in contact with. It's because we've largely went back to our normal ways of gathering with a large amount of people. And these numbers uh, show what happens when we do that. So we should be clear that uh, these numbers are trending in the wrong direction. You know, and... Um, if we look at where we were during our, our first wave, we can see that, you know, we, we let the virus off the hook. We know exactly how this virus is spread. Um, we're in a pandemic. We have to expect to see cases. We can't avoid that. We're going to see cases. But what we shouldn't expect and we shouldn't accept are people who have 50 contacts or people going to work when they're ill or people not being forthcoming with healthcare providers. This is what leads to numbers that we're looking at right now.